right? In fact, now I think you differ with me on this. The most important position uh, in Solat is the center. Where you come up with that? Where we do Kiyam is not called a place where you make Kiyam. It's not called a place where you make Rokor. It's not called a place where you make Jelson. It's called a place where you make Sejida. So there got to be some powerful meaning behind Sejida, where you put the most important part of you, the intellect, your bow, submit. All right? So the rituals, again, don't mean you're righteous. The rituals, what are they? They are signs of something greater. Now I have a, con a, a, a concept, I do, do this a lot uh, in, in, in class, in school. And we'll put on the board, S-I-G-N-T-I-S-T. -T. Huh? Evolves to S-C-I-E-N-T-I-S-T. -T. Now they're both pronounced uh, the same, and I'm fortunately got this concept in English called uh, homonyms. Just to confuse us, homonym, just, just to confuse us. Two words that they, they sound, you pronounce them the exact same way, but they claim to have different meaning. So it's no coincidence that G-O-D is pronounced just like G-U-A-R-D. So the real G-U-A-R-D is the G-O-D. All right? So the ritual, so the, so, so the things that are that's coming into me, coming into me uh, through my five senses, these are just S-I-G-N. And then when it arrives at the intellect, then we begin to uh, refer to it as knowledge. But it first was a sign. In fact, they don't call it verses, we call it uh, items, right? Signs. So let's return there, the, 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 the thing. As babies, we come here helpless and weak. We have to struggle and depend upon someone else to take care of us for months and for years. Everybody in here, I don't care what your age is, no matter how young, how old, this is how, this is how. Right. So you know, it almost, make, almost make me want to stop now, I don't know, cry what night, and say thank you a lot, and thank you mom, and thank you daddy. Have you said that to them, if they're still with us? Oh, pray for them. That if you couldn't do for yourself, a baby is born from his mother and his father and it cannot do anything but lie around and cry for his mother or someone else to put a bottle or put the nipple of a breast in their mouth, change his diaper. For almost two years, the baby depends completely upon someone else to bring it water, milk, and food. Someone else must remove the filth from the baby. All of us, we've experienced this. We might not recall. So we have father and we have mother. Now we also have, before every uh, surah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rahman and Rahim, except now. And some scholars say because of the content there, etc. All right, so we're seeing two attributes, one a little more like father, and one a little bit more like mother. Before all the surahs except now in the Quran, the book of guidance. So Allah is ar-Rahman, the merciful benefactor, and like the work of a father, because the father likes to see his child with strong virtues, he likes to see it grow in an image that will be a compliment and an asset to him. Arachman is to bring about a divine creation in the moral nature of the man. His righteousness, his high principles of character. Now let's look at this, character. Now this I saw, I think I saw, y'all familiar with Kaiser? Kaiser Permanente? And I saw this, I had to copy this. Character. You know I put it on the board for the, for the students. All right. Watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become actions. Watch your actions. They become habits. Watch your habits. They become character. Now look. Watch your character for it becomes your destiny. Yes. So that character, very important, and we know we have an example for us is the model, human, that is Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prayers and peace be upon him. All right, character. And the dignified man that lifts the man above petty, unclean, and ignorant things. The father will risk losing the closeness of the child for the sake of having it come into its natural form. It is just natural for a man to work to preserve his child because he knows that he lives through that child. So how many of you have met my father? You have now, you met me. 
And you want to do, we want to check on that. Ask me, my wife. We know each other since we're eight years old. And my life. Matter of fact, I gave my wife said, "Now you went too far." <laughs> <laughs> One time I was doing a, a marriage talk. We were in the uh, living room, someone's living room, you know, and they were getting married. And I was, you know, you know how to get into it, you man. Very get, I, I'm into it. And Mary, she moved to put herself in a position in front of me and said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I was uh, talking about my father, and uh, I found out, you know, you have to wait to be married at least 25 years, 30 years. My wife tells me, you know who she in love with? My dad. <laughs> she said, really? But you were so much like him. And, uh, uh, and I do, we do things like this now. My parents used to bring her over the house. We're talking about 10 years old, 11 years old. She'll do different things. They'll help out. And then I can recall time for my first uh, date. And my dad, he could see I was troubled. He said, what? I said, I got to go. I was probably some fraternity, et cetera, et cetera. He said, why don't you take Mary? Marry him. And so we ended up, daddy, he, he took us in the car, took us to our date. And after the date, he brought us home back home. First date. High five. Yes. So it is natural for a man to work to preserve his child because he knows he lives through that child. Benefactor, remember, a rock man, signif uh, signifies more of a masculine attribute because it implies giving freely, disregarding selfish motives. Now, the mother. Allah is a rahim the merciful redeemer. Signifies grace, mercy, and compassion. While grace implies the giving of benefits, Compassion implies having sympathy or coming to the aid of something that needs aid. And the beauty of this attribute is it's already there. What the baby needs is already there before the baby gets there. So we can see in that role of Ar-Rahim, the root of the word Rahim means the wombs of female. Arham. Life begins in the wombs of the female. In the creation of life, the divine extends compassion and mercy so that its beings won't suffer. This compassion and mercy is extended before being even, before the being even recognized that there's a need for someone to aid. Now this thought is crossing my mind. You know, when I first started, I'm at a child school, when I first started, I mean, I was just shocked. I was in cultural shock. Now, if none of you have been to, well, I'm at a public school. You need to go to a public school. I don't know what it's like, you know, if I think it's all over now. Just go, just ask the principal, and go sit in a class, you don't have to say anything, and just see for yourself. There was, in our Islamic society, we try to put people with moral standards and integrity before the students. But now, you know, just a degree exception. Right. So anyway, they hired me, and I was just in such shock. I said, well, you know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to visit the homeless. I didn't just walk up, I called. And I'm telling you, when I went to the home and I identified how the child was acting, I could see. There were a couple homes. Because uh, I don't have that kind of uh, uh, development growing up. I was intimidated at the door. And the mother, they could see, come on in, you know. <laughs> so I'm very serious. I wish I could smile. It does not mean I'm very serious. And this is, remember I said, you are what you eat. And this is what this a child is consuming all of their life. So we have this uh, a phenomenon. Again. While the being is growing and being fashioned in the womb, in the womb, it is protected and kept safe in the water of the womb. Even though harsh blows may come against the womb, the water safely absorbs them and maintains a comfortable resting place for the developing life. Ar-Rahim embodies such compassion that the suffering, the pain, and the terror that the life form undergoes in the cramped confinement of the womb is completely blocked from its memory. None of us can recall what happened in the womb. And it steps boldly out into the new life without any memory of birth pain. Remember now, though, every living thing born from the womb grows to stand over the womb as a preserver, protector, and nourisher of the womb. But again, remember Allah is the benefactor. He is the giver of graces like the man, the father. And Allah is also the greatest bestower of mercy and compassion, like the female, the mother. Allah is not male or female, 
but he is the source of excellence of the male and female and the originator of everything. As we begin to clue, first part. Then again, let's get back to the child. Then he grows up. We all, we've grown up as a child. He has to depend upon someone else to protect him for a number of years. He has to be taught many things by other people. But when he gets grown, he begins to walk around like he came here all by himself. Just a few seasons ago, if someone had walked away from him, he would have passed away. Why do we say that instead of dying? I could say that. Because we believe that is a movement of the soul. So the soul doesn't die. So sometimes, you know, you can imagine what, what, what I'm like as a teacher. Oh, yeah, I get, I get right on the floor. and lay flat on the floor. And I say, call me. They call my name. Hmm. Louder. And I don't respond. Then I get up and say, that's how some of you act when I call you. You act like you did. Now, notice, then, I, then that gives a chance to teach. I said, now, notice I didn't change. My, my body didn't change. So how you know I'm dead? The soul has moved on. And this is going to happen to all of us. You, me, I might, I might leave before you, then there's another joke. So I'm looking at this in the class, I'm looking down, I'm looking down, uh, down the road, and I see a, uh, I, uh, I see a tombstone, and it has my name on it. And I see my name, and it says, my people were not born, 1947. But then the last numbers I say is 2-0, oh, I can't figure out the last two. So you know some spot out of the child says, yeah, one seven. So that's another teaching mode. I say, he might be right. But the same goes for him, too. He might be right. Because we don't know. Yes. So that's why we should conduct ourselves a certain way while we are here. So again, we have here, uh, as we conclude, that we, the child grows up and takes an attitude. And that attitude, brothers and sisters, is what destroys us and robs us of the opportunity to grow as human beings. That is why so many men and women, they come up in the world, and when their parents finish raising them, finish raising them, some of them, that's the end of their growth. Now, of course, they have statistics saying that a lot of them now, uh, you know, we call them the millennials, a lot of them now are living with their parents. This is a new phenomenon. That's why I'm not saying there's a negative, but this is the case. So many times, they don't grow anymore as a mental, moral, or spiritual being. So this brings us to a clue. But you know, now, we just finished Ramadan. It says the gates of hell are closed during the month of Ramadan. And the scripture also says the name seven. And some scholars have said the two eyes, the two ears, the two nostrils, and the mouth. Gates, gate to hell. All right. All in the head where reading takes place. Again, all in the head where reading takes place. So we can imagine now we're some 30 days removed from Ramadan. And so we can imagine uh, the situation of the gates of hell. They were closed on Ramadan. But now we look, and all of us, we achieve eat of it. And what does that represent? A renewal of life. And what is life? Life is a gift. Life is a loan. Life is a mercy from the creator of human life. I repeat, what is life? Life is a gift. You know, give, root, give, alone, mercy. What does mercy suggest? That you can see, you can walk, you can talk, you can breathe, you can think. And how much did you pay? How, how, much, how much did you pay? Did you earn that? So it's a mercy. Allah is the most merciful that we have these gifts. So we now, after E, some 30 days removed from that, we have a new understanding. No. We have a better understanding. No, we have a purified understanding of life, of our community, of our families. So we have to use that to establish an alternative culture. Alhamdulillah.